This guy is nuts. Is he really making daily recordings of his possible divorce and releasing it as a podcast? They both cheated on each other. She's making six figures and still doesn't contribute to any joint endeavors financially. Why is she still with him? Why is he still with her? I can't wait for the next episode. This helped me be a better wife. So this is how men think. I hate my husband less now. I understand my wife more now. These are some of the listener comments to the Divorce Diaries podcast. All over the map, I know. These anonymous accounts of events should resonate with anyone that has been married, is married, or is preparing for marriage and helps couples avoid pitfalls as they might prepare for marriage. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Link in description. Now for today's episode. One of the larger problems that typically happens happened just about five minutes ago. This is Divorce Diaries. It's rebooted. I'm not angrily ranting anymore. I am deep, I would say, into therapy. I don't know how many weeks consistently I've been going, but um, I don't know, we're definitely months at this point. I should probably go back and look at my billing history so I can let you guys know in the next episode. But I'm firm proponent of therapy for all just to unpack the traumas because I think maybe you'll find out you need a little more therapy you'll find out maybe you need a little less find out you'll need it for something specific um, you'll find that you're a great problem solver or not so great or whatever it's lots of um, reasons one should find themselves in therapy so I've used a therapeutic method that I've been taught by my therapist it's like um, she calls it retreating um, it's not really running away from your problems in the sense of when you hear the word retreat, I don't know if you're like me, but when you hear the word retreat, you may think of a soldier that is under fire, that is outnumbered, out quote unquote gunned, and they are, you know, just... <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking for a parking spot. They are outnumbered, outgunned, and they're running to save their their life, to save their own skin. And sorry, still looking for a parking space. They're running to save their own skin. But that's not what this retreat means. This retreat means you're going back to try to discover the best ways to handle something. Um, that's what you're doing. You're going back to figure out the best ways to handle something. And... As things have happened, I typically have reacted with a knee-jerk reaction. I'm sorry for the in and out, but I was looking for a parking spot, and I've got one now. So let's... Retreating. So it's a skill that I've been taught by my therapist. And retreating isn't like the same retreating you think of when you think of the word. At least when I think of the word, I think of a soldier that's like outgunned, outnumbered, or they want to sort of get out of the fight. They realize that they're in over their head and they've got to like go back um, and get out of there. They've got to get out of there. And it looks a lot like running. It looks like a lot like running away. It looks like cutting tail and, and running, but they are trying to live, survive, to fight another day and or, which is really what retreat means, they're kind of coming back and they're going to reevaluate and try to figure out the best next move. Not reacting in an immensely emotional way in the moment. In the moment, if you are under intense fire, you may just go crazy and start to shoot and get yourself killed. 
you may turtle up, get yourself killed. Because that's the fight was the shoot and maybe potentially get killed. The flight um, would be running away, which looks a lot like retreating, but actually you're going to retreat and you're going to figure out how you're going to respond. And I had to take um, my family, because I'll still call them that, um, to the airport to traveling. And my wife did something that I typically get really, really, really upset about immediately in the moment when she does it. I don't think of the fact that she's likely not sure that she even did it. She doesn't even know that she's slighted me. She doesn't even know that I'm hurt. She doesn't know anything. She just knows she said and did something in and amongst all the other things that she said and did. So I was really in my feelings a second ago because my wife brought up the concerts that two of our kids had gone to. And she said, you know, I think you both have had the first perfect concert. And when she said that, I just kind of didn't say anything because one of my kids and I are in a better place. And this kid wanted me to come to her. This kid wanted me to come to her event her concert. So I did. And it was a lot of fun. Um, but I was there. It was the, it was the entire family and the other kid, we aren't doing so great. My wife, I think may have been being somewhat manipulative or, or maybe she just wanted to give my kid a good time, but she brought two, not for all of us. Cause our first kid, um, me and my wife took this kid to a concert. I mean, I bought the three tickets down in the pit at, at a concert and the three of us just kind of vibed out sort of a, not like a quinceanera or something like that, but like a bat mitzvah thing, you know, I'm not Jewish, but um, it's kind of like a rite of passage. And then I bought three tickets for my other kid so that we could do the same thing. And then I was planning on, yeah, doing it with the, the last one as well um, and enjoying their first concert with them as parents together, the individual child, just kind of carving out little, a little bit of an individual relationship for us. And I thought that was cool. Um, but my wife, she doesn't know this, understand this probably doesn't care about it. And maybe I don't deserve it, but she sort of took my I did things, let me just be clear. I did things that got myself disinvited and not welcome to this concert with my daughter. My wife bought two tickets for it and they happened to be way out of state, halfway across the country. They went to this concert and, you know, I guess that's okay. I mean, it happened and I did things to get myself disinvited. <sighs> that sucked. So as I'm taking them to the airport, my wife says, um, that's why I had to give this backstory to understand why, why would I be emotional about my wife saying that? Wow. I think you guys both had the perfect first concert. And then she says to the one that I didn't go to. Yeah, I'm glad you did. And I'm like, I'm so glad I was there. I'm no longer going to act like people are stupid or naive. I don't want to do that anymore. I don't accept. If you are that stupid and naive, then I'm just going to have to say I don't have time for you either. But you know that I couldn't come, was disinvited, and I... I have verbalized to my wife the rite of passage and we both should go to their first concerts with them, experience it with them, watch them go through it. And they can feel like 
they're like kind of like the only child for the that time because it's tough when you got a bunch of kids like how does each kid feel special and i looked at the those those outings as us making them feel totally special you all are number one in our world because i don't have a favorite child i joke around and i tell them all i'm like i don't have a favorite child i hate you all the same that's what i say um because i don't want any of them to think or feel that they're favored in my eyes and outside of what I don't want them to think or feel, honestly speaking, I don't have a favorite. I, they're individuals and they both have, they, they all have really good qualities. They all have not so great qualities. They're people that I brought into this world that I love immensely for all of their gifts and talents. And I just, I don't have a favorite. Like I don't, um, I may, I may have one that I'm not, vibing with the most at the moment but favorite my goodness that, that's a tough one so yeah i would get i used to get really upset at that and i would react in the moment but i retreated this time and i used that therapeutic technique that my therapist taught me i retreated i started to send a text at the red light as soon as we got there and i started to type as fast and as furious as i could see this is exactly what i mean when i say that you aren't empathetic. This is what I was going to send to my wife. When I say you aren't empathetic, this is what I mean. I mean, you, you would, why would you even say something like that with me in the car? That's something you guys could say that in your own car by yourself, but I'm here. And you would say, oh, I'm so glad I was there. Well, I wasn't because I was disinvited. The other kid wasn't, but the other kid and her aren't on bad terms. No one's on bad terms except me with the family. I'm the only one that's on the outs. So to say that, it was very much like she was spiking the ball. It was very much like she was putting it in my face. It was very much like she was twisting the knife. Now I say all that to say, she was not spiking the ball. My wife was not throwing it in my face. My wife was not twisting the knife. You know why? She wasn't considering me in that moment, in those moments. She was not considering me. She wasn't considering that I was driving the car. She wasn't considering that I drove from my place to pick them up at 4.30 in the morning and took them to the she wasn't considering that I might be saddened by being reminded of the state of our relationship and the fact that I wasn't at that concert and I was hurt by that. See, my retreating prevented me from sending that text message, even though the only reason I didn't send the first one was because the light turned green. I wasn't in control of myself like I should have been. I almost sent it and typed it. And then I was like stewing the whole time we were driving up there and I retreated more and farther. And then I'm like, okay, let me, um, let me go over here to, um, as soon as, as soon as we get out of the car and I, give her a hug. I'm going to say like, that's what I was talking about. Hey girls, can you give us a second? And I was going to ask them to walk away so I could talk. And then, but what would all that have done? That would have pissed me off, pissed her off. She wouldn't have understood what I was saying. She wouldn't have agreed with it. She would have barked at me and she may have kept it together for a little bit. And then as soon as she turned away from me at the terminal, she would have turned to the girls and they would have looked at her and been like, Geez, are we really about to go? And now mom's in a bad mood because of something dad said. See, I'm glad we're leaving. I'm glad I don't talk to my dad. And she's like, I'm glad we're getting a divorce. But instead, my therapeutic technique of retreating, I was able to not send the text and make it worse. Not say anything, dropping them off. Not send a text. Instead, I'm recording into my recorder right now. Because... We all have to find a way to get out the toxins. And what is my toxin right now? It's a very bitter pill to swallow when you don't 
matter to someone. And I'm not saying I don't ultimately matter to my wife. It's not what I'm saying or trying to say. But what I'm saying is I've had that feeling of, do you know that I'm here when you speak? Do you know what I've gone through? Do you know what I'm going through? Because I could have sworn the hours that we've spent talking about this thing that hurts. I thought that you might have remembered when I was telling you how sad I was about not being able to go to my daughter's concert. And really, you just bought that. And I had to say, I'm like, so are we at a place now where you just take the kids across the country without saying anything to me? I just got a phone call. Can you watch the youngest kid while me and the older one go halfway across the country to a concert? It's just out of the blue. I had no idea where the tickets were. I didn't realize. I thought it was close by. I didn't know that it was halfway across the country. And, you know, you got to decide. Is somebody telling you the truth or are they lying to you? I've never bought a ticket to anything and didn't realize that it was a plane flight away. I didn't realize that. She said that, oh, I looked in our area, but the ones that were in our area, they were so expensive. So when I said, oh, let me just see if there's something, you know, close by, like maybe like Philly or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, but there wasn't. Oh, and when I, by the time I had already hit purchase, it was halfway across the country. I had no idea. I don't know. At, at this point, I'm, I'm choosing to just think that everyone's lying about everything all the time. Because, I mean, the truth isn't good if you say it sometimes. Because if the truth is, I've been doing some really shitty things with our kids they're really upset at me. I think this could be a cool thing for me to do to buy my way in because that's how my family communicates with buying people off and things like that. So maybe I buy these tickets and I only go with her and we fly on a plane, then we can bond and you're excluded and I am in the best graces because of what happened with us. That's fine. I've noticed everyone that plays a short-term game, they... They mess up a lot. People that are just good and righteous, they do have a tough time. So I know I have. But I've also had a tough time because I haven't been so righteous sometimes. But retreating to find the righteousness is something that I got to do every day. Deep breath retreat and be righteous deep breath retreat and be righteous deep breath retreat and be righteous because the people that I'm surrounded by they're probably not going to do it and I don't have the right to rake anybody over the coals for being shitty or not righteous it's not my place and it's never righteous to rake anybody over the coals. So, yeah, today was a great example of all the things that I felt over the years that my wife has done. Not even knowing that she's doing it, which. You know, I have to I have to take that into consideration as I just move with her, I have to take that into consideration I'm not being, I'm not able to be, I guess, considered by this person in the ways that I need to be considered or evaluated, loved. I'm just not able to. She just, she just says things. Not without thinking. She's just not thinking about me or my feelings when she's about to make that statement. There's a lot of jokes I don't make because I feel like that might be a soft spot for her. So I won't make that joke. It's like, read the room. If the room is full of vegans, you know, I don't, I don't know that I'm coming out on 
I'm coming out and eating a hamburger in that group. I, I, I'm not trying to conform for their approval, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm doing that. I don't think I'm doing that. All right. It sucks when you don't feel that you're visible to someone. It's like, man, am I, am I not here? Did we not talk about this? Do you, do you not remember how important this was to me? Like I said, I really do love my wife and she's still my wife now, but it's so hard having someone that I know because I've had health problems when I am, you know, down, hooked up to many, many machines. Hand and foot, she'll wait on me and take care of me and make sure that I'm clean and not let a stranger do things for me. It's amazing dealing with her during my hardest, darkest times. Being with her during my hardest, darkest times. But it's just those Tuesdays, you know, those Wednesdays, Saturdays, just one comment. Boom. Ooh, that hurt. Ah. You know, I don't, you know, I was kind of sad to hear that, right? Oh, I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that I just said it, first, you did the first thing that you didn't know. And I'm just, I just told you about that. Say, sorry. Oh man, I didn't realize. Oh, I just brought it to your attention. And you said, oh, I didn't think that way. Please don't defend yourself because now my pain and my sadness is actually moving to a little bit more confusion as to why you aren't just saying, hey, I'm sorry. So I'll say it again. Um, I'm just saying that I'll, I'll just explain it one more time. Now, 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 you know, now it's on your radar. I said that I was hurt by what you said. Now you're not saying sorry. Now I'm like, oh, now you're choosing, I believe, not to say sorry. Now maybe you know I want a sorry or feel that I deserve a sorry. And not only did you not give me what I deserved in my mind, which was consideration to not make the comment in the first place. But after I bring it to your attention and tell you that I feel like I deserve an apology for what you said, now you're not going to give it to me either. So it's like either I'm dealing with a person that wants me to hurt or I'm dealing with a person that has so much pride that even when I tell them that they've hurt me, they will hurt me more by not apologizing because they're prideful. Or I guess there is a third. I'm rejected. I reject your premise that I hurt you. You should accept the fact that I didn't know or intend to hurt you and no longer want your apology. I reject you. And that's really the crux of it. I've either felt invisible a lot of the, a lot of the time to my wife or when she's done things that have been hurtful. And this is just me talking about a small thing. This is not me talking about affairs or money or hiding funds or anything like that. This is just something in the scheme of things. Um, maybe smaller or more pedestrian, but and maybe only because it's, it's, it's not so tangible. Maybe that's, and, and that's another reason um, my therapy has been so good because just because something doesn't have a dollar amount tied to it doesn't mean it's not really, really important or there's a lot at stake. High cost. It may not cost a lot, but it's high cost. 
Because what cost me was my trust in her. In a weird way, I, I almost moved to, I'm like, I kind of want to make her respect me by telling her how she disrespects me. But if it was in her to just be empathetic in that way, it, it would come, would have come out. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I can't try to change other people. I needed to take my time, retreat, and realize that, oh, she doesn't mean to hurt you when she does these things. Don't think she does. Don't hold her to any high, super high standard that she can't reach. And don't be mad if she can't reach a standard that you held her to that she didn't hold herself to. You'd just be an idiot for doing that. So I want to say to her, I'm sorry for trying to turn you into something that you're not. I'm sorry for being so upset when you were just being you. I'm sorry for making you feel stress and anger and frustration by pointing out your flaws. You should be... You should have always been in a relationship that made that made and makes you extremely happy all the time. I hope one day I can be and it doesn't matter with who. It could be with my wife, because like I said, in a perfect world, I don't really want a divorce. I feel like I have to because I, I do wonder what that would be like. If I had someone Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that did think of me, just like I was literally, I was just, I was just number one to them. I want to make them number one to me. I just would like to know what that feels like to be in a healthy, non-clingy, non-codependent, non-frustrating, you're number one to me, my top priority, I'm not above yourself. But to a degree, yeah, I want to be more like when I say something like, oh, I take a bullet for you. I'm like, no, oh, I would do that. Like, and that, that is me literally putting you above myself by taking a bullet for you. And I would like there to be times where I am more important than you are. Because that what happens in a relationship sometimes you have to do something for someone else or you have to sacrifice because if and that's what it is we can't do this so that you can have this i can't get this now so that you can have this i won't buy my car yet even though we planned on it and i don't know when i'll be able to buy my new car because your car just had a really bad mechanical failure and the money that we were saving up for the car has to go to your vehicle now so i love you a lot you're my priority and so if this is your plight it's also mine i want to feel that wow that was the divorce diaries podcast the daily saga will continue tomorrow the full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully, these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.